this is the purpose of what we are doing in the last two weeks. It's, um, um, you could call it by the first thing I wrote, Rayleigh Criterion. It's a um, good proper name to uh, search things by. The other way to call it is, um, it's uh, referring to a kind of resolution limit. So, oops. Um, so this is section 4.5. Uh, I thought it had the word limit in there. So you are looking at resolution. Uh, most people here are familiar with the word resolution, not New Year's resolution, but high resolution, low resolution, you know, dots per, dots per inch, um, DPI. Um, so when we talk about resolution, we are looking at can you resolve, tell a part between two things. So uh, how many here have 2020 vision? Some of you without eyeglasses probably. When you've heard the phrase 2020 vision, right? Yes? What does 2020 mean? So it's usually said uh, 20, uh, so, so called 2020 vision is actually 20, I guess over 20 vision. Like what do these numbers refer to? Yeah, size of the object at a distance. So I think if I'm remembering this correctly, what this means is you can resolve 20 millimeter di difference um, at 20 feet away. What it means, so you know, suppose I put two lines are super close to each other. Uh, my lines are kind of thick, but imagine it's a very thin line and I put another line very close to it. Is that right? Maybe, I may have to review it. Um, and you know, if the second line is very far away, then you can tell that there are two distinct lines. As I move this line closer, at some point, uh, at some point, whether you can tell that these are two distinct lines instead of one, depends on your vision. So these are something like a five millimeters away. I think I must remember something wrong because 20 feet away is, maybe it's supposed to be 20 meters away. Because isn't this like 20 feet? And I can tell those are two uh, lines and I, my vision is a little bit worse than 2020. So I may, so uh, let me just say, uh, <laughs> the exact numbers are in question, but uh, that's what resolution means. It's, uh, um, so given a particular size of one thing, it's angular size depends on how far away you are. So your ability to um, um, resolve things, see things, uh, depends on really what's called angular resolution. And what we are going to go over in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so is that this resolution has a fundamental limit. And this is going to be a common theme that you will hear from this point on in this class. Um, it, so it, this is actually the biggest discovery in, um, in modern physics. That, um, so in classical physics, these two things, you could uh, theoretically uh, resolve them to uh, an arbitrary precision. It was a matter of making your lens precise enough and you know, just making measurements precise enough. There was no fundamental limit to how small of a thing that you could resolve. But what, um, what the wave optics, what the wave nature of light tells you is that there is a fundamental limit. There's a particular size of thing that you can tell apart, um, given uh, some physical characteristic of your measuring device, and that's it. Uh, you, it. Your most ideal device cannot have a resolution that's any smaller than that. That's what this, um, the second phrase that's written here, diffraction limited resolution is. That is the fundamental limit of resolution. When you have a, a particular optical device, a telescope that has a diffraction limited resolution of, I don't know, a micro, rad micro radian, uh, I'm making up a number, then it doesn't matter how well you manufacture the telescope. Based on some basic physical parameters, 
no matter how well you make it, it'll never be able to resolve uh, two things um, better than um, that micro radian. And it's based on this simple idea that you have actually seen before. So you've done the, the, um, the diffraction lab, right? So if I have this uh, beam of light, right now it has a particular size. Um, let's say, you know, um, it's small enough. So let's say this uh, represents an ideal uh, point, a spot with, with an arbitrarily small size. Now, when I make this light go through one of these apertures, one of the single slits, then this ideal, a uh, very narrow, very precise thing to point at things be, uh, broadens. It becomes broader. So when I, um, so when I put it through, I guess a third, the smallest uh, um, slit, that it be, you can see. Um, so you see that it spreads out. Um, but if you choose to focus on the central maximum, then it didn't spread out that much, right? But as you make the slit smaller and smaller, the central maximum will spread out more. You have, so, um, yeah. So it, as a, if I use a slit that's uh, half the size of the other one, then it broadens out to about double of what it was before. And if I make the slit even smaller, then, so this is now the central maximum. So let me just, uh, uh, so this is the central maximum. Compare that to the spot that was there before I put this slit in. So, um, so this is the result of the single slit diffraction. And that's what we mean by, oh, my laser pointer. <laughs> I have a second laser pointer. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what we mean by, diffraction limited resolution. So before the ideal ray optics, geometric optics idealization, we would say this spot is here, um, like ideally at, you know, at, with an arbitrary precision. Like you could make, uh, describe this as small as you wanted it to, um, in theory. The, um, what physical optics tells you is that when this light comes from a particular slit of a particular size. Um, so, you know, this one, I think you guys measured it to be like 0 0.1 millimeter. Then that results in this, uh, results in this slit being, um, results in this light spreading out. And that's going to limit your ability to resolve two different things. Imagine you had two laser pointers pointing at some angle, um, uh, through this slit, then you know they would be separated by this much. And if you were go if it was going through a larger slit, then you would have been able to separate them. So you know when you have these two things going through a larger slit, then you would be able to separate them. But if when it's going through a smaller slit, then uh, sorry, I can't actually do it. <laughs> but you can imagine that as this is spreads out and as this red beam spreads out, that they will start to overlap. That you won't be able to tell them apart. So this is the question. What is the, um, yeah, so this is the question. What is the, um, um, what, is the smallest angle, smallest angular size um, that you can resolve with, let me use this phrase, uh, diffraction limited optics. You can actually quickly derive this relationship from what you know about single slit diffraction. So let's say you have a single slit here. So you have some light that's coming in through this single slit. You have some light that's coming in, spreading out. 
And uh, when this light hits this screen here, you get an intensity pattern that looks something like this. Right? You've seen this pattern. And this is what we are calling, what we have been calling central maximum. And this is the picture I want you to imagine. If you have a second set of light that's coming in from the front angle, so you know, if this is coming from a source here, this is coming from a source here. And this would diffract through, and it would cast an uh, uh, intensity pattern here. And so if they are uh, far separated far apart, then it would look something like this. You know, Mac so one maximum here, one maximum here, you'll, you'll be able to tell them. So call that the um, angle delta theta. And the question is, as you move this closer, as this source here moves closer to this source here. So, you know, let me just, oops, I'm mixing up colors. So this is my angle theta. As you move this angle theta close, what is the point at which these two overlap enough that you won't be able to tell them apart. You won't be able to tell that this central maximum is separate from that central maximum. And this is the place where we are going to use a somewhat arbitrary criterion. This is called Rayleigh criterion. <laughs> so it's arbitrary because uh, it's a gradual thing. I mean, when they are very far apart, you can tell them. When they're right on top of each other, you can't. As they are begins to separate a little bit, can you tell them? It's a sort of, um, it's a, there's not one point where you would say they are clearly distinct and they are clearly not distinct. So the somewhat arbitrary criterion that we are going to have is this one. When the middle of the central maximum of one of them overlaps with the first diffraction minimum, is when we are going to say that's the angular size, the, that's the smallest angular size we can tell apart. So when your intensity pattern looks like this, this is when we are going to say that, so when this central maximum falls with this uh, first diffraction minimum, is when we'll say um, that's the smallest angular size. So this is my uh, theta mean. And this is what we call Rayleigh criterion. So do you guys know how to drive the, this minimum angular size then? What would you need? OK, what physical parameters would you need to know? Now, do you need to know the distance to the screen? Because I'm talking about the angular size. Oh. Yeah, I don't want the screen to be far away. I do need to know the size of the hole. Let me call that A. What else do you need to know? So this is the aperture. I guess that's why we are calling it A. Uh, you need to know the wavelength. OK, um, so the wavelength, lambda. Uh, I guess that's it. So in fact, this theta mean, it's the angular position of the first diffraction minimum, right? So, well, the equation for the diffraction that I remember is for destructive interference. A sine theta is equal to, you know, n lambda. For the first minimum, n is going to be equal to 1. So it's A sine theta is equal to lambda. I'm dealing with a small angle here. So I can say my theta mean is approximately lambda over A. So this is what Rayleigh criterion would say for one dimensional slit, as in you know, slit, one dimensional aperture. When you actually look up the Rayleigh criterion in your textbook, there's going to be a small number here. It's going to be lambda over 1.22a. It's uh, what you see when you scroll down. And that's because um, it, most of the times when you're dealing with the optics, you're not dealing with the slit you're dealing with a circular aperture. So instead of this kind of overlap, you are thinking of this kind of overlap. So that's where this factor of 1.22 comes from, at least I'm told. I've never actually 
Wait, sorry, I put 1.2 to the wrong place. Factor of 1.2 to two probably goes on the numerator. <laughs> so anyways, that's where the factor of 1.2 to two comes from. But even the ratio of wavelength to the aperture size, slit size, gives you the rough idea of what the, um, what the minimum wavelength is. Oh, sorry, minimum angular resolution is.